Well, hello and thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Carl Forand, and I'm going to present uh, the CORDIS website and how we have the European Union research information. And I will also introduce our new uh, collaborative network. So, as we are the European Union, we love acronyms, and CORDIS is our favorite acronym. So it's the Community Research and Development Information Service. Uh, so what I will present what happens to research projects which are funded by the European Union, the cycle from a project and its results. And I will finish with a new partner service, which is a social network we have set up to, for uh, researchers in Europe and beyond. So the background of CORDIS in European Union research. Uh, the European Union has been funding research since 1984, the first framework program. Uh, CORDIS started in 1990 to collect the information and we've been online since the early days of the web in 1994. Uh, from the beginning, CORDIS has had the repository of all the projects that have been funded under these programs. And as the projects produce results, uh, reports, information, we also publish that on CORDIS. So we have a, a long tradition, over 20 years of data, uh, about what the European Union is doing in research. Also over the years, we have added other services, um, websites for different themes, different information. And we also have several uh, applications, software applications for certain needs uh, of research over the years. At the moment, we're in the seventh framework program that runs until 2013. Uh, there's 50 billion euros uh, of funding over these, these years. Uh, so it's quite, it's one of the biggest uh, expenditures of the European Union. Uh, the next program will be called Horizon 2020. And this will also tie in with the innovation activities of the Union uh, under the new flagship uh, initiative, the Innovation Union, and also the Digital Agenda initiative of the Commission. So to get started on CORDIS, this is the homepage. Uh, there's quite a lot going on in CORDIS. We update the website daily with events, news, um, and the information which is added every day. Um, at the top of the website, you can see the tabs we have to help you navigate across all the websites. So wherever you are, you should be able to see the main section you're in. Uh, and you can always search from every page. So the core of CORDIS, the most valuable content we have to start with, uh, are all the research projects. So we have over 89,000 projects that have been funded in the last 20 years. Uh, the current framework program, we're already over 11,000 projects. Um, so we have all this information on CORDIS, and we try and present it in an attractive way so that if you find the project, you can find all the information that's related to it. So the description of the project, the dates, the funding amount, all the participants, all the consortiums which are built up around, uh, across Europe, um, and the funding schemes. Uh, with this new uh, layout, which we plan to uh, launch and revamp soon, uh, we want to make it easier to find all the related content. So you can bounce between the different types of content in the system. So the funding program, the, res uh, the results, uh, reports, documents, links, uh, external links to the rest of the information. Of course, after you've funded the, a project, it's very important to know what you got out of it. The research reports are almost exclusively in English. So with the showcases, or these feature stories, we translate into uh, five other languages. So we have uh, English originals, uh, German, French, Italian, Spanish, and Polish. So we try and close some of the linguistic gap we have uh, in research as well. Uh, these 
offers, these uh, showcases uh, offered through a technology marketplace. Uh, and this is uh, one of the attempts to try and close the gap between research and innovation. Uh, the European Union, Europe in general, is not very effective as other countries in getting research out into, into the market, into enterprise, into, into products. So this is how we contribute to try and make the research information more accessible. Um, we reuse these uh, stories, these features, and from the databases we have, we produce uh, some magazines. So we have the results magazine. This comes out 10 times a year. It's, um, it collects the stories with a few extra features or specific themes. The current one is space, as you can tell from the picture. And we also have from time to time, um, three, four, five times a year, a focus magazine, which has uh, original content on a particular theme. So at the moment, we have one about the Danube, innovation around the Danube. So that's quite a large region. Um, and we also translate these probably into French and German. These ones are available in the three languages. And there's also a recent focus about the risk sharing uh, financing facility. So the point is that to help uh, researchers to take risks, there's some, the European Investment Bank uh, has some funds available for this. So these are the two special editions we have at the moment. Uh, all these publications are available for free. You can subscribe to get them uh, delivered to you whenever you want. Or you can order single copies from EU, book, EU Bookshop, which is one of the other services from the publications office. We have several other services to try and get the information out, to try and disseminate our information, to make it easier to share. So we have a daily news uh, service. Uh, again, available in the six uh, languages we produce. We also have a service called Cordis Wire, which allows contributors, external uh, users, uh, research organizations, and the like, to be able to contribute news to the website. Uh, so this uh, gives um, organizations a platform upon which to publish press releases, uh, news, events, to get their stories out. Uh, the, we've re recently launched a mobile version of our news service. Uh, so that it displays correctly on smaller devices. And if it works well, we'll try and spread it out onto other parts of the website. We have a national and regional services. So the idea here is that you can find what's going on locally. So if you want to know what's happening in projects in your, uh, in your country, um, contact points, um, other partners in your country, this allows you to slice the Cordis data in a way that's local to you. We also have several regional services where regions have a, a small subsite on Cordis, which will link them to their information. Uh, we are also launching a new search, which we hope will be more friendly for the user. It allows you to facet the information, to receive email notifications, and to get the data out in a format that suits your needs. So you could find a, a custom search, which you can get as an RSS feed. You can use, you can get it as pure XML data, uh, comma-separated values for Excel. Uh, these are all the way we try and support the reuse of our data, which, uh, which is made available. Um, and uh, in the medium term, we would also like to have an option to create booklets out of the data you get. So you could get some XML or some data and format into, for example, a PDF document that matches your needs, similar to what Wikipedia offers. So most of this information is just going out. There's a bit of input, but it's fairly static. So recently, we have launched a partner service. And the idea of this is to give the researchers and the broader public a more interactive platform where they can do things for themselves. Um, it's, uh, we've had a partner service on Cordis for over 10 years. It was relatively static. You put in your data, and you wait for people to find you. Uh, and in about 10 years, we had about 3,000 users. Uh, since we launched the new one, 
in three and a half months, we have almost 6,000 users. So it's proven to be quite popular. Uh, the idea is that you can build on the existing information on Cordis already. So when you build your profile, you can link to the rest of information that you might already have on Cordis. So you can link to the project you have participated in, uh, and you can build up your reputation. Uh, what you really need to do when you need a new project is to find new partners for a new consortium. Uh, this is quite a lengthy process. It's quite a difficult process uh, to find, especially in other parts of the world. Um, so by allowing people to link together, uh, they could build the consortiums and how, and on our platform and collaborate in this way. Of course, when there's 50 billion euros available, uh, there's quite an incentive to collaborate. And we contribute in this way. So the layout of the system, uh, again, we have a concept of tabs at the top. So you can see the different types of content. Obviously, the core content is your own profile. Uh, this is where you put your address and your background. You can start uh, making friends. In fact, these would be professional connections that you would set up. Uh, and then the active part of the system where you actively offer a project. And this is where you want to attract people to your project or you want to offer the expertise that other people would invite you to join their project. Then we have several other functions. Uh, you can create and join groups. You can organize yourself. We have all the seventh framework program calls for proposals so that groups can form around particular calls. So when there's a, a deadline coming, they can all group together and put in a proposal together. Uh, you can get recommendations. This is another way of building your reputation. And you can track what's going on all the time. So you have a history of all activity that you have done or that a group has done, um, different ways. So the core active one would be uh, partnership requests. So for example, here I have joined someone else's request. Uh, they have an offer, a project which sounds interesting. I have ex expertise I can offer, and I can join this request. So it works like a group. We can discuss inside this group. The group can be um, open or closed. Um, and you can see there's a whole history of events that's going on. Uh, you can have a library of documents. You can have a blog for your group. You can have a calendar. Um, you can have an RSS feed of, of this group's activities. Uh, if I have something to offer as well, I can create my own partnership request. So I define if I'm proposing a project or offering expertise, the, the information, I can link it to a specific call for proposals or keep it open. Um, and I describe what I'm looking for. So in three steps, you define what you're offering, you define who you're looking for, and then you can even launch an automatic matchmaking. So people who are offering and I'm looking, the system will try and match you with the appropriate other partners. Um, to, we were seeing how the volume of the system allows to get more and more partners. If not, there's a, a classic search. You can just search on keywords or certain uh, attributes as well. So as I described before, there's plenty of other social interaction you can have on the system. So you can build your groups, uh, which again have the blog, calendar, RSS feed information. You could send a circular to a group. You can have it open or closed according to your needs. Uh, here are all the calls for proposals. I think at the moment there are about 43 of them. There's quite a lot. And as you can see, there's uh, hundreds of millions of euros available. And uh, you can see that in some of them, we're attracting 30, 50, 60 uh, proposals for projects, which we hope will be turned into concrete proposals, which will be submitted to the commission. And that way, we encourage people to participate in the framework programs. Uh, you have the activity trackings, recommendations, and of course, uh, the privacy settings, so you can decide how much you share with others. Of course, your basic profile, the intention is that it's public, otherwise you wouldn't come to the system. But then you can um, have quite fine-grained tuning of what exactly you share with who. Um, 
it's true there are plenty of other social platforms out there. We're not really a Facebook. We're not quite a LinkedIn. The advantage is we're non-commercial, so you put the data in here, and we're not going to use it for anything else. Uh, we're here for a fairly specific audience uh, who can use this platform to collaborate. So we hope that it's a platform people can trust as well. So uh, in the future, what's coming up? Uh, with the next framework program, we were going to make sure we focus on getting out the research results. Uh, it's not something the commission has done too actively. Uh, we have to make sure that we can show that research is worth it. Uh, we also want to provide more tools for the users to publish their web content, to collaborate, to network, so it becomes a much more interactive platform and not just this is the European Union telling you what we've done. We also want people to participate in it. Uh, in the back office, we want to integrate with the uh, publications office seller repository. We have some colleagues who have presented at the metadata conference as well. Um, this will be a set of services which will store the information for access for long-term preservation and to be able to reuse it uh, and making the most of the semantic uh, possibilities. And of course, Horizon 2020 is the next big program. Uh, the commission has asked for 80 billion uh, euros. Uh, so far, the impact assessments of previous framework programs have proved that for every euro that's put in, uh, even more is got out. So we hope that even in these difficult times, the funding will go ahead because this will help the long-term future uh, of the European Union.